Buying your first home, we all know, could be the scariest investment we'll ever make. But imagine this, buying your first home and you can't even move in because of this. So you start moving in, setting up your furniture, everything is good, but then you turn your air conditioning or your heat on and a gagging sewer odor comes out of all of the duct system throughout the entire house, causing you to vacate. And to top it off, the downstairs basement gets flooded out from an unknown source of leak. Every time it rains, water seeping in and cause all of this flooding and all of this damage here that typically insurance do not cover. And to top it off, hiring a contractor, a roofing contractor that took $10,000 of your money and never returned to complete the job. So in today's video, I'm gonna play a broke homeowner that has no resources to hire a professional to come in and detect that sewer odor or that leak coming into the basement. In fact, I'm not gonna even have my twin brother. It's just gonna be a helper and some basic tools. And I'm gonna get into character with getting rid of this uniform and putting on my homeowner's outfit. All right, I'm Dave and I feel like a homeowner. All right, the first step is we're going to stay inside nice and clean and deal with this sewer odor first, then we'll work on the outside where it gets a little bit of muddy and wet. So the first step in sewer odor detection is right here. Especially with sewer odors coming out of your duct system throughout the entire house, always start where your furnace or your heating and air conditioning is, especially your return air, which is right here. Now we're in a basement area and you can see that we've got a drain right here. You want to take a flashlight, look inside the drain and confirm that you've got water in here. If it's dry, a lot of times those sewer gases will emit from this drain and then get sucked right into the air conditioning unit. In this particular situation, you can see that we've got water holding in the P-trap, so it's not the issue here at all. The other great thing, when you've got a basement or a crawl space and you can see the piping here, you want to be able to isolate these areas, especially if you're a homeowner. And again, we're simply talking about you not being able to afford a licensed plumber to come out and do all this expensive detection work. When you have piping exposed like this, this is awesome. And I'm going to show you right now why. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need once you rule out that your P-traps are all full of water and there's nothing visible that you can find that's causing the sewer odor, you will need to perform a smoke test. Now, in most of our videos, you'll see all this expensive, fancy compressors and smoke machines. Those machines that we use are seven, $8,000 worth of equipment. There's no way you as a homeowner is gonna be able to even rent that type of equipment. And again, if you you bring in a contractor, they'll charge anywhere from a thousand to three thousand. I've seen it all the way as five thousand dollars to do a smoke test. So here's a secret that you can do for less than fifty dollars. But you gotta promise me something. Don't share this video. Keep it within ourselves because I don't want this secret to get out to the masses, taking away all of my hard work here. Okay, so what you're gonna need as a homeowner to save thousands of dollars is some smoke candles, which you can get at a Granger. Grangers are all over the country. They do have them in stock. You can buy this set right here. I think this is a three minute candle. And then you're gonna need a shop vac, preferably a metal one. But in this video, we're gonna show a regular plastic shop vac. Now, in order for that candle to stabilize inside the vacuum where it's just not rolling around, what I've done is I got a couple of plate straps. I glued them together along with a cap and a nipple. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter, or actually inch and a half. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna house the candle, so it's not gonna fall over. And the reason why I put it on a plate strap is because you wanna be able to have, again, the candle to stay upright. So by moving this around, it's gonna continue the balance of this candle in the uh, vertical position. Genius, genius, genius! So what you want to do is you want to start with the waste pipes that are closest to the return air, which is right here. So you've got a main, typically the larger pipes will feed a toilet or multiple fixtures. So what we're going to do is just take a regular hand saw and then just cut the ABS like this 
Now you got to make sure that nobody uses the bathroom and flushes the toilet because you'll have poop going everywhere. <laughs> If you have an all rubber coupling like this, you don't have one of those expensive, fancy torque wrenches that cost 40 or 50 bucks, you can get a four in one screwdriver. Just take the tip off and it'll fit right into the nuts here, like that. See, you can just unscrew it this way. The other cool thing about these couplings, you can just raise them up. You can disconnect the pipe. Actually, they put this one down inside the pipe, so I can't move this around. Okay. Well, we're going to have to cut this. Okay, so now we can isolate this portion of it. We don't want the smoke, or you don't want the smoke going down into the main sewer, going into the city sewer. You want to try to keep as much, especially with these little candles. Unlike a smoke machine, you're going to get a ton of smoke. With these candles, you're limited, so that's why you've got to cap stuff off to get that higher concentration of smoke building up in those sewer and vent pipes. All right, so you can buy one of these rubber, they're called gym caps, that go over the pipe, and then you can just use that same four-in-one screwdriver and tighten it down but we don't have the right size and if you don't want to spend the extra money for these just get yourself some tape just make sure that you seal off really well so that smoke doesn't bleed through all right now that you've got all the pipes isolated and taped off in the basement it's time to get up on the roof and seal those sewer vents off come on up Ooh, this roof doesn't look safe Okay, so these black pipes that come out of the roof, this is what you want to seal off. You don't want all that smoke coming out. Ooh. Oh no, guys, look at this. This is really loose. This is really loose. Like it's disconnected. Look at that. All right, so we've got the kitchen line that's completely isolated. And you'll really tell if it's a kitchen line because it smells. Like my dad used to say when I was a plumber, thing smells like my first wife. Anyhow, we've capped off this here. We've capped off the bottom. So now what we're doing is we're gonna inject smoke in this pipe that's on this side of the plumbing system. We're gonna inject smoke right here to fill up this section right here. So that's number two. And then number three is actually the kitchen line. So as you can see, we've separated everything. So when we do inject our smoke, we'll be able to pinpoint what sewer pipe is causing this sewer odor from getting into this HVAC system. So now we're all isolated it's time to get the smoke pumping in all right because this is much smaller than most pipe sizes what we're gonna do is just take this rubber cap like this and then get a razor knife and just cut the diameter so it slides in between the rubber giving you a better seal when you're injecting the smoke all right now that we've got the hose attached to the pipe you want to make sure that the hose goes on the blower side not on the suction portion of it it's typically on the very top of the vacuum like that now the next step is to make sure you go turn that air conditioning on whether it's your furnace or your ac we want to activate that air conditioning system to suck that smoke up especially when you're isolating like this so make sure that that gets turned on now that's how much smoke this is going to release into that vacuum that's what the vacuum's gonna do. All right, guys, let's go put this to the test. So we tried to smother it out by putting it in the grass. We even took a wet towel and it just kept going. So I dug a little hole, patted it down, waited a few minutes, but check it out. Look it, it's still smoking. These little rascals, look at that. That's amazing. All right, we're smoking. Now, as you notice, I'm not, you don't want to leave the vacuum on a long time. You want the smoke to build up inside the vacuum. Kick it on for a few seconds, shut it off. All right, now you want to walk around to each register to see if you're identifying any smoke coming out of those registers. Nothing yet. 
Okay, so we've ran the smoke in this pipe right here for a good three minutes. So what we're gonna do now is move it to this section of the pipe. Now you see, if we would've had a cap that fit this, we wouldn't have to deal with all this tape. See, if I was a professional plumber, this wouldn't look very good, but because I'm a homeowner, I can get away with this. Oh, uh, you fellas have nothing to worry about. I'm a professional. Okay, go, let's go look at the registers. Oh, yeah, yeah, turn the light on. Oh, okay. okay, guys, we're getting smoke coming out of here, out of this register, which is right above that toilet area. Okay, guys, so I think it's this toilet right here. This pipe comes from right above where we're putting the smoke. We're gonna pull this toilet off. This is right below where the return is. You can see that they cut some, some metal material here and sealed it off with silicone, which is part of the return. We're gonna go ahead and remove this toilet to see what we can find between the floors. Let's see here. Okay guys, so here's my theory so far. You've got a wax seal here, but you can see, you see the little gap, the little gap right there is an entry point to that return. So if this wax seal is not sealed, the air conditioning unit, the return, will pull sewer gases from here, pull it into here, and then go into the duct system. So what we're gonna do is we'll take some smoke, we'll put some smoke right here, and we'll see if the return is sucking the smoke into this hole right here. So let's see if my theory is correct. Oh. Yep, look at that. It's getting, see it? Uh, look at that, look at that guys. Look at that, it's getting sucked right in, into the return there. Look at that, look at that, right into the return. Look, all of it. Look at, all of it's getting sucked in. Look at that guys, when I pull away, we get a lot of smoke. As soon as I go to the, the opening there, look at it, it's just getting sucked right in. Well there you go, you see how important it is to run all these different tests and it was right here with one little small hole where that sewer gas was getting pulled between that wax seal into the air conditioning return, blowing that sewer gas everywhere. So you're probably wondering, what's the fix? Well here it is. So you wanna make sure you get some silicone that's good on plastic and wood. What we're gonna do is just inject the silicone into the wood and over the plastic holes here. Don't be shy with it, really get it in there. You don't want to take any chance of sewer gases getting in. And what you gotta do is let this dry for a good 24 to 48 hours. Now this is very unusual that you've gotta do this because normally pipes are not embedded inside of the return air, but because there's so much suction power, we gotta make sure that we overdo this. There's no way to reroute the pipe. All right, we can always come back once this cures, we can always come back and add another layer on top of this. So let's let this dry. All right, quick tip. Sometimes this even happens to me. After you perform your smoke test, remember, get up on the roof and pull that tape off of the vent pipe. So come on up. All right, now that I'm on the roof, I wanted to take a moment and just offer some insight if you're gonna hire a contractor. Make sure that you never ever give a 40 or 50% down payment. Always make sure that your contractor has a specific payment schedule plan protecting your money. Great example is this. When the contractor arrives along with material and crew at the end of the day after he performs work, that's when you wanna give him a small piece of the pie. Don't get sucked into giving someone 30 or 40 percent this will always protect you as a homeowner okay guys now to the water leak detection when it's flooding your basement area here now there's not a lot of plumbers that specialize in rain leak detection very hard to find from my experience so as a homeowner you don't really want to call a plumber unless they specialize this or a big leak detection company you want to find someone that can detect the leaks now in this particular situation there was car carpet and walls. So in order to find and detect a leak, you do need to open up walls, remove carpeting. And the reason why I'm in this room is because the homeowner stated that a lot of the heavy moisture content was in this area right around this window. 
Now you can see we've got two different elevations. We've got this window well here that sits much lower than the ground level. So what we want to do is start at the lowest point. And all we're going to do is we're going to pump water right in this lower area here for a good 15 to 20 minutes. Remember, you want to make sure that you're reenacting a rain. So a hard rain, 15, 20 minutes of just saturating the soil. That's what we're mimicking right now. So we're going to go ahead, set up our water hose and inject water in that area to see if we get any water seepage coming in right here below the window. So again, here we are outside and as you can see, here's the window and down here is where we're going to pump water in. We've got to test the window. We've got to test over here. It's got a nice powerful spray hose here that I'm just going to set right here. Now you have to be very patient with these type of leaks. It could take at least 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes an hour for any water to get through here. So you really want to make sure that you spend enough time injecting the water or else you're never going to find where those leaks are. Oh, we're already getting water. We're already getting water, guys. We're not even a minute into it. So let's go see inside the house. Getting water? It's coming up higher. Look at the water kind of seeping down here, you guys. Look at that. So what's happening is that water's coming down, saturating this wall, and then eventually that carpet and padding is just soaking this up like a sponge. So again, imagine if I ran the water around all the window and up. We would have never known if it was the window or this lower part. So now we know that there's a breach in this structural stem wall or footing, retaining wall, whatever you want to call it. That's where the breach is. And look at the water already coming underneath the wall here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move our water test to this lower elevation on the next window and see if we get more water intrusion on this side of the house. Another tip is you can see whoever applied this black adhesive, it's like a tar-based material. This is a big no-no, as you can see, they didn't properly apply it to a dry surface. That's why it's peeling off right here. So if you're going to apply anything to an exterior wall, you have to make sure that it's completely dry. The other thing is, if it is in soil, you might want to consider using a rubberized membrane material because, again, soil, all the water, it's going to go ahead and it's going to eat through this, deteriorate this, and you're going to be back to more leaks in your home. Okay, so we're not getting any water at this area here, but as we move up, we found a suspect area right here where the silicone wasn't the right product or adhesive to adhere to the window and the concrete. So I'm gonna inject just a little bit of water right here and see if it comes into this room. Okay, we're not gonna go full force. We're just gonna do a little bit of water into this opening here, right around the window area. All right, let's go inside and see if we have anything. Ooh, you can see the water bleeding through the studs. Oh, look at that. Look at the water, guys. Oh, it's coming in. Look at this, you guys. That is a crazy amount of water. I wonder why this basement got flooded out. Wow, unbelievable. So we've got two leaks that we found that caused all of this water damage. So here's a big takeaway. If you're gonna buy a house in a basement area, make sure that your home inspector, or better yet, hire a structural foundation guy to come out and inspect the outer exterior walls. And you can see that there was previous patching done on that side wall that just didn't look good. That is where you need to, as a homeowner, as a new home buyer, take a look at those areas, take a look around those windows, if things don't look right, you need to make sure that you address those before you buy a home because it can get costly. All right, day two, we're gonna go in and see if that silicone dried up and make sure that we're not getting any more of those sewer gases getting into the sewer system. So let's go have a look. So this is where the hole was. You can see how strong and sealed that is. Okay, so we've got a, a candle here. We turned on the heat and look, we're no longer sucking in any smoke into the HVAC system. This is awesome. So now we're okay to put the toilet back. All right, one important note here. A lot of times your wax seal kits have these little plastic washers that don't secure the bolts like this. So make sure that you order an extra set of bolts 
that come with the washer and nut. And what I like to do is take the washer and the nut and secure it to the base of the wax so you can see how secure that is versus a wobbly bolt. So you wanna make sure that you secure the bolts like this so it secures the toilet much longer. And when you're tightening your toilet down, this is more secure as well. It's not gonna pull up out of the flange. Okay, so we're not gonna take any chance and we want a better seal. So what we're gonna do is just take this wax right here. I'm just gonna apply it and make a thin layer. Doesn't have to be thick, just enough for the first wax seal to compress to this wax right here. I know it looks a little messy and a little unprofessional, but we do not want any chance of sewer gases to come through. And to be honest with you, this just offers an extra waterproofing barrier. Compact it around the bolts there. There we go. I like that. Now this may be a little extreme, but I'm just going to do it to offer some extra sealant, especially with the flange being below the floor level. We're going to heat up the wax. And then compress it in. We'll compress it to the wax that I laid on the on the closet flange. Don't move that. Now we know for sure we've got a nice seal here that's completely fused together. Okay, toilet's installed. Make sure there's no leaks. Well, there you have it. No sophisticated tools, no twin brother, just some basic tools to get to the bottom of this very challenging smoke test. And what I forgot to add in the very beginning was Melissa, our customer, had four other plumbers try to come out and detect what was causing this massive sewer odor. Anyhow, folks, appreciate you watching our channel. If you can please leave your comments, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.